Hi, everypony. Sorry about the box, it just kind of appeared in my room, and there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it. I figured I might as well just get to making my review of Pinky Apple Pie regardless of it, though. This episode was entertaining, but it really doesn't impress me in any way. The Apple family was portrayed really well, their flaws were very fitting for each of them, and I really loved how Applejack shows her normal stubbornness towards whatever it is she's trying to get done. Pinky was in top form, performing wonderful little jokes without losing her mind. She even sets up a running gag that gets used by the narrative. To top all of this off, the interaction between her and the Apple family is very fitting. Well, I think that- Ah, CYBER PONY! Where? Wait a second. That's no cyber pony. Cam, what are you doing here? I shipped myself here. I was in that box. Why would you do that? I figured there had to be a reason you haven't collabed yet, and I wanted to be the first, and ambush seemed like the best strategy. Well, can't blame you for taking advantage of my lack of distrust for the mail that flies through the rift from time to time. So, you were saying? Wait, really? No one's ever been okay with me interrupting them before. I suspect you'll just interrupt me later or sneak in a new way if I don't, so please, continue. Well, I think the interaction among the members of the Apple family was nice, but it never really progressed the story. The tensions between them never grew, and instead they just sort of started fairly high, and at the end of the episode, they're still fairly high. There is things to see past the overall interaction, though, that aren't so appealing. The whole scene where the Apple family talks about how amazing they are felt forced, and like the whole family was on a serious sugar high. On top of that is that their flaws fit them in such a way that they were almost predictable and didn't do much to expand on their characters. I will admit that I am extremely curious about what Big Mac's character is, as he's so far only given us little hints that amount to nothing substantial. A lot of people say that they would like to see Big Mac say more than just his signature two lines, but I disagree. This running gag has gone too far for them to stop now, so I like what the writers are doing in this episode. They're just stretching those two different words to mean as many different things as possible with changes of tone and all that. Pinky, on the other hand, was more of an observer, especially when she acts as photographer or fortune teller. This doesn't usually bother me, except it makes her jokes and antics feel far more detached from the other events of the episode, even though she was one of the main characters. Which leads to my major problem with the episode. Pinky was along for the ride, and was only there as a plot device to drive an Apple family-focused episode. Once I realized this, I was able to enjoy the story a little bit more, but I still had this major nagging sensation as I watched Pinky seem detached from the events of the story until the very end. The major flaw with this is that the ending feels a lot less special because she was acting as an observer, which I will admit is the only way most families can realize there's a problem. It also feels almost like an afterthought when her lineage is finally addressed even though it was originally the driving force of the plot. A lot of us, myself included, went into this episode expecting a Pinkie Pie episode, which left us all a bit disappointed. Instead, the episode is really an Apple Family episode with Pinky watching. That isn't really a problem in and of itself, but it was just a small annoyance watching the episode the first time. The morals were okay, nothing too special. The only problem is that I feel like the moral about friends who are like family would have been a lot stronger if they had come out and stated that she wasn't part of the Apple Family. As it stands, the ambiguity feels unnecessary and pointless, but who knows, they may bring it up in a later episode. I also didn't like the moral. The characters didn't come out of the episode learning anything, and all that gets established is that Pinky is probably not related to Applejack, but they are still very good friends. Which has been the case since the show started. It just makes the whole episode feel pointless, like nothing happened. If it seems like I have a lot of negative things to say about this episode, please understand that it's because although this was a good episode, it relied on its comedy and didn't do anything particularly amazing outside of the comedy. Mixed with the fact that I couldn't shake my distraction over Pinky's role in the story regardless of watching the episode more than once kept the jokes from really hitting my funny bone. What's your final ruling, Cam? Aren't we forgetting something? Uh... Something that is so awesome that it negates all the problems we've had with this episode and makes this episode easily worth watching? The song? The song! Apples to the core more than saves the episode for me. I cannot sing enough praise about it. I'm not sure if I can call it my favorite song in the series, but it's definitely my favorite song in Season 4. It has the same strong focus on instrumentation as other songs in Season 4, but it doesn't suffer from the forgettability like the song in Rarity Takes Manhattan. In fact, this song is probably the second most catchy song in the series. Most catchy for me being Equestria Girls. And thanks to this song being released early, my fears of Season 4 having a low remix output have been put to rest, as there are already loads of great remixes for this song. That song was amazing, but man did the animation seem off during at times. Specifically, Pinky in the back. I do agree with how amazingly catchy it is, though. Well, if my mechanical buddy is done with it, time for some fanboying. 
Wait, so you have a portion for your videos just for things you really loved? Basically. Awesome. Continue. I could only imagine Skeela when they went into the cave, you know, because Cerberus is part of this world. Not to mention, Skeela is horrifying. This is definitely the best way to use tree sap while you're underage. Nice shout out to Black Griffin Dusky Cat. Not to mention very well placed and probably accidental. Well, I think I fanboyed enough about the song. But seriously though, the song! Well then, until next time, this is Line Space. What are you doing? Um, my sign off. I always do one. It's like a final comment or ruling on the episode. Oh, can I do one? Of course. This has been Line Space saying Kitties! Kitties? Uh, okay. Uh, this has been Kamga's Pony saying uh, uh, Robot Kitties?